G'day, it's Pete here, and I'm back for the, all the action from day three of the World Championships. So there is a lot to talk about today because there was an extra round and a lot of action. So we'll jump in. Uh, and first of all, this is just a recap from where we were at the end of uh, yesterday. Um, but let's go in. And the first match I wanted to look at was between Australia and Hungary. So the first board I wanted to talk about is... How do you actually show values in this auction where you're bidding in this pass out seat? So here, both tables started off with an auction of one heart, pass, pass, and then this West player gets to bid. Now, usually when your choices are, do you want to overcall or do you just want to pass and let them play? You usually want to be trying to bid a bit more, which means that the values that you can have to bid are actually a little bit lower. So you might be bidding one spade on a slightly weaker hand than otherwise. So how do you actually catch up when you have these genuinely decent hands? So uh, here, West has a quite a good hand. I've got uh, 16 points, lots of queens and jacks though. Uh, they just started with one spade and here North bid two hearts. And East has a decent hand, but what do they do? They don't have a heart stopper. They're close, but they don't have one. Uh, they just chose to double. And now what does West do? Like maybe they bid something like two no trumps potentially. They just chose two spades and uh, didn't find their way to a game contract here. At the other table, uh, one heart pass, pass a spade. Now North bid two clubs instead of two hearts. I don't think it changes too much. Slightly lowers the worry of, oh, I don't have a heart stopper. So East got in there and bid two no trumps, which made it a lot easier uh, for East West to find their three no trump contract. But it's one of these ones where uh, when you're trying to allow yourself to compete more, when you actually have genuine values for game, trying to untangle that can be difficult in some of these uh, competitive auctions here. Uh, so Hungary got the uh, first swing. They got to their game and got six uh, imps there. Uh, they picked up a few more swings and were up uh, 11 to zero when this board came in. Uh, this one's a very, very interesting one. Uh, so I'll just go over the auction and uh, at both tables and then go back to the play. So here it goes, pass, pass, and East opens one diamond, better minor, and South has this hand. I've got quite a good hand, but their longest suit is the opponent's suit. So they started off with a pass, West bid a heart, and North doesn't have anything to bid, and East, seeing their partner is a passed hand, just a minimum 12 count chose to pass, and now South gets to make a takeout double, uh, their partner said spades and they now bid two hearts to show a good hand and north came to the party and bid four spades uh, now making four spades is not easy on this hand uh, it's a pretty pushy contract at the other table uh, one diamond one heart they raised raised to two hearts here south now made a takeout double but it was a bit more awkward for north south for showing their strong hand the two heart bid uh, at the other table gave South a good way to show a strong hand at a low level to see if North wanted to push on. Yeah, maybe South could have bid three spades or bid something a bit more to see if they could have got there. Um, but they chose two spades and they made nine tricks. But uh, let's go back to the table in four spades. I reckon the play on this one's really interesting. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight here is when you open one diamond and you only have three playing better minor, there is only one hand shape that actually opens one diamond with a three card suit. So when you have three diamonds and three clubs, you would usually open a club. So to open one diamond with only three, your clubs need to be shorter. So you need to have two clubs uh, and three diamonds. That leaves eight cards. And you also don't have a five card major because otherwise you would have opened that. So the only hand shape people open one diamond with is four spades, four hearts, three diamonds and two clubs. Now let's see how North utilizes this information in the play. So they got a heart lead, which uh, they just discarded a club and they just played a diamond to the ace, king of diamonds and just roughed a diamond. They tested diamonds first. They're trying to set up diamonds and they notice that West follows here straight away 
At trick four, Declara knows the entire layout of the hand. They don't know where all the honors are, but they know the exact shape. East showed up with three diamonds, not four, three. So they have that four, four, three, two hand shape. So here uh, they cash the ace of hearts and then they just take uh, a finesse. And at this stage, they don't draw any more trumps. They just go back to diamonds and they throw a club loser away. East roughs in, they can take a club and now North gets another entry with a rough and they know to finesse this 10 of spades now. So they play a spade to the nine and now the South hands are all good. Fantastic hand, I love that one. And just using this small inference of the opponents open to diamond, they only showed up with three diamonds. What can their hand shape be? So awesome hand there. Uh, the last hand I wanted to look at here. Uh, here I just wanted to note, so here North South got to four hearts in just a five two uh, fit. Um, but four hearts is actually a really good contract on the hand. Uh, the main reason it goes down is hearts are five one. Uh, if you look at the hand, it's pretty likely that you're gonna get six club tricks and five hearts. Um, like the opponents only have access to two spades off the top. Um, so the bad split in hearts is what actually uh, kills the four heart contract here. Uh, but worth noting here is North actually opened one no trump. Um, now, uh, they, they don't have, they're not playing a strong no trump here, uh, but they do have a six card club suit, which is worth noting. So uh, often you'll see at the higher levels some semi balanced hands where uh, maybe they've got a six card minor or a five, four, two, two that actually gets to open one no trump. Um, and this three diamond bid was invitational or better with hearts. And they got to uh, four hearts here and pretty good contract, but it went down um, at the other table, uh, one club opening because it didn't fit into their no trump range uh, potentially. And I went one spade and North bid two diamonds in this competitive situation. This two diamond bid was also um, showing hearts, effectively a transfer. Um, there's a system called switch bids, which uh, I believe they use where two hearts show diamonds or something. Uh, anyway, uh, one spade, three spades, four spades, and North just doubled because <laughs> they, they know it's their hand. They don't know where they're going. Um, so they doubled there. Now, uh, I wanted to highlight uh, the opening lead here from North. Um, the opponents don't have very many points. They're effectively sacrificing. Uh, so when the opponents are doing bidding sacrifices, uh, largely you want to double them and lead trumps. Now here from Queen Jack, he doesn't want to give the game away about what his holding is. So he leads the Jack. Um, when leading in trumps, you don't really need to be that honest with your, with your lead. It's If this was a different suit, you'd be leading the Queen. Uh, but in trumps, it's not really going to affect your partner. It's going to affect Declara. So uh, that's why uh, they chose the Jack there. So um, a few swings and roundabouts in this uh, set, this match, um, but in, but in the end, uh, Hungary took it uh, with a score of 47 to 39. So a bunch of swings there and a few interesting uh, boards. Uh, so let's look at the overall results. Uh, so here, uh, there's a bunch of sort of upsets that I wanted to mention. So at the start of the day, I mentioned, uh, the previous boards, but we have a top versus bottom, uh, match UAE versus U USA two and UAE fared pretty well, only 10 imps worse than the top of the ladder. They were at the bottom. They were playing the number one team and, uh, just had a small loss. So that was a strong result for UAE. Um, also Egypt, uh, pipping out Norway by an imp, uh, Norway were in the uh, top eight. I believe they were fourth. Uh, it's really close in all these, uh, here, but great result for Egypt who was down in 19th. And also, uh, Guadeloupe, uh, coming pretty close to beating New Zealand who are in the top eight as well. So, uh, there was a few, uh, close, well, upsets or close upsets there. Uh, but also Israel had a fantastic win over South Africa. Uh, Denmark had a fantastic win over Singapore and Switzerland versus Netherlands. This is a gr strong result for Switzerland. 
uh, and pops them back into the uh, top eight there. So that are the matches from round seven. Let's move into round number eight. All right, so moving into round number eight, I've got an interesting match of Norway versus USA too. And there's a little bit of a theme here of competing uh, with lots of conventions or with a more natural system. Uh, because Helgamo and Helnus have a very natural system, and the other pair that we're going to look at in the East-West uh, play a lot more conventions, uh, Des Moines and Kranjak. Um, and uh, I want to highlight the strengths and weaknesses of both of them. Uh, I am a firm believer that if you've got the time and effort to put them in, uh, these conventions can be good. You will still be caught messing them up sometimes. Uh, but uh, here, um, this first board. Uh, here, South opens the no trump, and it goes transfer to hearts. And they try stopping in two spades, and East makes a takeout double. Now, what do you do with this West hand? Well, they chose to try and penalize two spades and North decided to run to two no trumps. And they doubled that again, um, this time for penalties. But uh, even with the right lead, uh, East West don't have the time to actually beat two no trumps here. So they set up the diamonds. Now North uh, knocks out the ace of hearts and then just going after diamonds uh, here, now North South have enough tricks because the hearts actually come in. Uh, the hearts break for them, so they've got three more clubs and three more hearts, and uh, they actually get to make their contract of two no doubled. So, uh, great start for USA uh, there. At the other table, I wanted to highlight an interesting bid here, which is instead of choosing to pass two spades doubled, uh, they wanted to try and escape and they bid two no trumps here. Now two no trumps is usually, hey partner, you choose. They're not really trying to get to two no trumps as a playable spot here, but where do you want to play partner? I don't really have any preference here. Useful sort of bid if you don't want to be trying to penalize the opponents. And this way you can find your five, three diamond fit rather than, you know, maybe choosing a three, three heart fit or something strange like that. So this two no trump bid um, allowed them to get to three diamonds. Three diamonds wasn't anything of beauty, but it was the sort of best playable spot for East West here. Uh, but that went a few down, uh, but uh, six imps to USA for that board. Uh, the next board I wanted to highlight here, uh, here it went, uh, one of the things about conventions is the information that they give away. The more you explore, the more bids that you take, uh, this gives information to the opponents. Now, usually the vast majority of the time, this information is going to be much more beneficial to your partner for choosing the right spot. But every bid that you make and the more detailed it actually is, helps the defense with the opening lead and potentially the later defense as well. Uh, so here, uh, West bid three hearts, which showed both majors in this spot. And he said, I don't have four spades. And then they settled in three no trumps. At the other table, one diamond, one heart, two no trumps, three no trumps. They didn't even explore for a four, four spade fit. They just settled in three no trumps. Now, the real question is, what do you lead from the South hand? So at this uh, table, they chose a spade. At the other table, after the opponents had explored a spade fit, they chose a club. Okay, so let's uh, look at the uh, how the difference pans out here after the opening lead. So East decides to finesse the queen of clubs, but that loses. And North finds a really good switch here, knowing that East, West, uh, East doesn't have good hearts. Uh, well, at least four hearts at least. And uh, switches to the nine of hearts. And now, uh, after they set up hearts here, South still has an entry with the ace of clubs. North has their five diamonds. They've got the ace of spades, but that's it. They can't make this contract. At the other table, after the spade lead, uh, they get to return a spade straight away. And here with their five diamonds, they've now got three spade tricks as they continue. Um, they very carefully looked at their spade pips here. So the eight went, and then after they played the nine, the seven went. So the 10, six are totally equal here. So they just play a load of the six. 
and they uh, know that their 10's good. And this is the uh, enough for them to uh, make 3-0. Um, so I really wanted just to highlight here that uh, exploration does come with a cost. The more conventions you do add, um, it does give information. This is usually beneficial to you, uh, your side, but occasionally uh, it can help the opponents here. And the club lead made it a lot harder for East West to make uh, three no trumps here. Uh, the final board uh, here was a, looks like a bidding mix up. I just, I usually don't try and uh, highlight these, but uh, I just wanted to carry on with the theme of uh, exploration and a uh, system. Um, so here, strong two clubs, they bid two spades, natural, two no, and they bid three clubs showing diamonds. And it looks like they knew what was going on, uh, but here after four clubs, four hearts, four spades, not totally sure all these bids, but the five club bid east jump to seven clubs. So I think somewhere along the lines, they had a bit of confusion here. So um, they're off the ace, so they got doubled and they went down one. Even if you do play conventions and you practice them a lot in uh, these sort of strange spots, even at the highest levels, these mix-ups do happen. So this is a genuine cost. So before you add conventions to your system, make sure you're aware that you want to practice them because uh, mix-ups like these will happen uh, no matter how much you practice, they will happen. So you want to make sure that you're getting lots of advantage out of them. At the other table, the uh, more natural system, Two clubs, two diamonds, two spades. They just bid diamonds, they raise diamonds, they bid six diamonds. Uh, really straightforward auction and uh, no uh, no disasters there. Um, <laughs> so uh, interesting just comparison between those two uh, that I thought that's worthwhile. Again, I do want to reiterate, uh, I think system's great. So don't make this as a, oh, I shouldn't play system. It's just a word of caution more. Um, so. All up, there was quite a few swings in this, uh, 49 to 30. So Norway with a relatively decent win over USA too. So let's check out the other swings. And this set was just bonkers. This is like <laughs> every match was just absolutely crazy here. Um, so nearly every match was a complete uh, max one way or the other. Australia, huge win over Argentina. Egypt though beating Sweden. So Egypt had a uh, small win over Norway in the uh, previous one. And uh, here they followed it up with another win against what was a uh, top eight team. Um, and India, England, Israel, all having max wins. Bulgaria versus Singapore near max and also a fine that uh, happened here. Another small fine occurred. Um, Hungary versus Denmark. I don't know what was happening. This not a max win, um, but a uh, good result for Hungary. Um, but like all of these scores, these boards were just wild. Netherlands, huge win. Um, and USA won big win over Canada. Italy, huge win over South Africa. And Switzerland, solid win over New Zealand. So this entire set was super swingy. So let's see what round number nine has for us in store. So on to round number nine, I've got an interesting match between England and Canada. So here, this first board, uh, both tables had the same auction, a no trump, two clubs, two hearts, four hearts. And uh, here in the play, if you look at the hand, uh, you've got three diamond losers, which are a bit of an issue. You've also got a club, which is an issue, and the queen of hearts. So two different ways to try and tackle this problem uh, were approached. Um, so the first one, uh, both tables got a spade lead, the one, and they, here they took the queen of clubs, so there's the Canadian player, Levy, play, playing this, led the queen of clubs, uh, planning to lose the first one, but maybe seeing if they can set up the clubs, and trying to use these diamonds, they've got three to the ten opposite three to the queen, as long as east has the jack of diamonds, and west is the first player to win, uh, they can't, um, they can't get their diamonds in time. So here, this queen of clubs play, losing to the king. Uh, East-West can't untangle three diamonds here. Uh, so they just go back to spades. And uh, at this stage, uh, they can make it. 
So as long as we don't play diamonds, they're fine. So they go in and finesse the jacket clubs. And now they let go of one diamond here. And they play a heart to the ace. And to make the contract, they have to finesse east for the queen of hearts and playing east hearts for one. Here, they are in an eight card fit, but they just play a heart to the king. And the reason for this is that they know that they've got this 10 of clubs to throw another diamond. And if hearts are three, two, they can let the opponents have the queen of hearts and they'll be all good. But here, there was a four, one split and they went down. Uh, but all in all, I actually thought this hand was uh, pretty well played. Um, at the other table, they had a different approach to doing this. Uh, so here it went spade lead and they won and they decided to get rid of a diamond straight away from the queen doubleton. Uh, so they went and did this, which looks pretty reasonable, but now your tenor diamonds and queen uh, don't have the same sort of effect. And from here, whatever you do, uh, I believe you can, will be going down on accurate defense. Um, now that's because of the 4-1 split, which um, the other line wasn't really playing for anyway, but uh, worth noting that. Anyway, uh, they carried on. Uh, I just wanted to highlight this discard here, the Nine of Diamonds discard. Uh, they can see that South has been throwing diamonds, and they don't think that their diamonds are too useful, but it does weaken their King Jack third. So let's see the impact of that. So this is where uh, they just trumped a spade, and then they led the Queen of Diamonds, and here the Jack falls, and then when a diamond is continued, they get to play low, and this 10 is now a winner. Now, at this stage, they don't know if uh, East West needs to keep trumping diamonds, or like who's got the good diamonds or what. Uh, if they play a club, uh, the opponents go down, but leading a club away from the jack is pretty dangerous. If you switch where the king and queen are, uh, if you lead a club in this, this will just open up the suit and give away a club trick. Um, so here they opted to switch to a heart, and now they win the heart cheaply and choose to finesse the hearts on the way back. And now when they give up a club, it's nothing that can happen. This 10 of diamonds, do they want to trump? But uh, this north hand's all good. So uh, two interesting ways to try and deal with the three diamond losers and uh, how to actually cater for it. Um, yeah, so that was the first board I wanted to highlight. Uh, the second board I reckon's uh, super interesting here. So um, here both tables got to uh, three no trumps and they got a, a heart lead. Now, the first thing is what does East play from three hearts to the king, looking at queen nine. Um, if you put in the king, they get the ace and queen and they opted for the seven at both tables, which I really like, but uh, the eight of hearts gets to win uh, really cheaply. Now at this table, uh, they, Right, both tables, they started with a low spade next. But what do you play with your doubleton king looking at queen 10 third here? So low spade, you're under the pump. Do you go in with the king? Both tables decided to play low, which I reckon is really cool. Uh, nice play. Lots of people would go into the king here and solve this guess for the, the north-south bet. Do they play low to the queen? Do they play low to the 10? Uh, now Bakshi uh, decided to go in with the uh, queen. Um, and after this, the play was reasonably straightforward. They kept going with spades, uh, heart lead can one, they tried to see if spades broke when spades didn't break, they took their diamonds and tried a club towards the king. And when that works, uh, they've got their king of clubs and their ninth trick there. The hearts are still tangled up at the other table. Uh, same start, so low heart, ducked, low spade, again ducked here, but they put in the 10. And now uh, when east wins the jack, the main effect here is uh, where south thinks the king of spades is, and you'll see how this plays out towards the end. So they then switch to clubs because east can't um, continue hearts. So they win that, and they decide to set up clubs. So here they've now cashed diamonds. And at this stage, they just exited a club. And what they're trying to do is make life really difficult for East here if East had the King of Spades. So let's just imagine we took this King of Spades and put it in the East hand. 
So here they win, and now they switch to the Jack of Hearts. They duck with the Queen, but take the Ace of Hearts, because they're pretty sure the King is over here. And now they're trying to make East lead away from their King of Spades. So I throw them in, and if East had the King of Spades, I'd have to lead a Spade around and you'd win the Queen. Uh, here they lead a Spade, they play low, but alas, not today. Uh, so another game swing to England there. Uh, so really cool hand there from uh, the England Camden match. Uh, England won 34 to 23. Uh, here's the full scorecard. So let's look at all the results from round number nine. Uh, so here, Norway had a massive win over Argentina. Egypt has been continuing their solid day with a win over Netherlands. Um, so they've gone three small wins on the trot against top eight teams, which has been fantastic for Egypt. Uh, USA had a huge win over the UAE. Uh, Switzerland, a uh, big win over Guadeloupe. Um, here, Sweden beat India and Hungary beat Italy and USA to all handy wins over Bulgaria. What I personally want to really highlight is the Australia versus New Zealand. Uh, Australia had a huge win over New Zealand. Um, in previous years, New Zealand has had it over Australia. So, um, yeah, good to get one back, basically. Um, but, uh, yeah, Egypt's continuing. Solid day for them. They've had three tough teams and had three wins for them. So they're doing really well so far. Um, so let's move on to round number 10, the final round for the day. And now into the final round for today, uh, round number 10. I've got an interesting match between Israel and Norway for you. Uh, this first board looks like a relatively normal diamond, spade, two spades. Uh, one question should be, in the pass out spot, should North pass this out or should they push on to three clubs? Here, North uh, chose to pass, uh, most likely due to the vulnerability. At the other table, they chose to bid and uh, Calamity followed. Um, they chose three clubs and here East bid three hearts and West chose a peculiar four diamond bid. And I just wanted to try and explain what their reasoning might be here. This got doubled and four diamonds went poorly. Uh, but here, uh, their thoughts might be that maybe their partner's trying to show uh, three spades, four hearts, and five diamonds for the singleton club. And if partner's got five diamonds and only three spades, they didn't feel comfortable rebidding their four spades to the nine. Um, the alternative is maybe this three heart bid is just trying to highlight the club shortage and trying to bid to a really pushy game um, and uh, get there but uh it didn't work and they got to four diamonds which looks unusual at the face of it but i think the main confusion comes after this three heart bid and first of all is partner guaranteeing four spades could they have supported you with just three and an off shape hand now i think they could but i'm not sure that they would actually follow up with a three heart bid though uh, but i think this is the uh conf where the confusion set in and they thought that they would try and play in their fit and got penalized and went for 800. So lots of nuance in this small bid here, which can uh, cause some issues. Uh, the next board I wanted to talk about, there's a slight difference in uh, system structure here. Uh, so here West with their flat 17 opened a no trump and East transferred to clubs and they passed. Now three clubs made comfortably but three no trump also makes when the clubs divide. You can get six club tricks, two diamonds and a heart, maybe a spade if the opponents attack spades. Uh, but bidding there is a bit difficult, and here it just said bid three clubs. They did that, and that's where they played. At the other table, uh, they opened one club rather than a strong no trump. It's probably just because their no trump range is different, not 15 to 17. Uh, North got in there and bid a spade, and now East, instead of forcing partner to bid three clubs, uh, supported clubs and showed genuine support. Now, uh, West now knows that they've got a club, a source of tricks in clubs, so when the opponents bid three spades, they're like, well, we've got a spade stopper, I've got the ace king of diamonds, we've got a source of tricks in clubs, and hopefully partner's got a trick somewhere. And they chose to bid three no trumps, and this just comfortably makes um, here. So, and swing to Israel back. 
The uh, last board I wanted to talk about is comes back to the theme of your bids give information to the opponents. Um, so here, the more system you play, the more information you, you give to your partner, but also to the opponents. And I just wanted to really illustrate this effect. Um, here, when it went uh, pass, pass, it went one diamond, north bit of heart, went pass, and south just jumped to four hearts. Applying the maximum pressure, thinking four hearts might make. West has a fabulous hand and chose to make a takeout double, but East really doesn't have anywhere to go. And at this high level, they were just trying to think that uh, hopefully partner's got four tricks. Maybe my king of clubs is a trick and we can beat that. Uh, but this actually came home for 11 tricks and a score of 990. Um, so just jumping to four hearts straight away applied the maximum pressure here. At the other table, they chose a splinter bid. So it went one diamond, one heart, pass four clubs, which again says I want to play in uh, four hearts, but I have a singleton or void club. Does that interest you for slam? And now West again gets to make their double, but not in a pressure situation where they are going to be playing if partner doesn't have a bid. So I went double, north passed, pass, redouble here would just show first round control saying I have a void in clubs. North said, yeah, I've got a shortage in diamonds. Does that uh, suit you? And Seth said, nah, not really. And they subsided in four hearts, but the what they gave up here was notice that the immediate pressure of playing in somewhere natural um, let West off the hook. West doubled four clubs. West also doubled four hearts at the other table. West wants to do something, um, but uh, not bidding four hearts immediately gave them away off the hook. Um, so adding more conventions isn't always what you need to do. Natural systems are great. I am a f big believer in conventions. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight that some people think that, oh, you must be playing conventions at this highest level. But there are downsides that aren't talked about uh, that much and had a few examples here today. Uh, so all up, uh, Israel had a medium win over Norway by 12 imps. Here is the full scorecard. And now we'll take a look at the entire results. So uh, England and Switzerland have had fantastic days today. Uh, England beat uh, South Africa by 19. Switzerland had a big win over Bulgaria. But over the four matches today, England scored 64.4 VPs, which is averaging a little bit over 16. And Switzerland uh, got 66.6, .6, which was averaging up around 16.6. .6. So they have rocketed up the leaderboard. Uh, Switzerland wasn't even in the top eight at the start of the day. And now they're sitting one and two, USA two very closely behind them. Uh, in other interesting matches here, uh, Hungary versus Egypt. Egypt has continued their success today a solid win over hungary so egypt was down in about 19th uh, at the start of the day they've moved up to 16th but they have played four very tough teams and managed four wins this has been a fantastic day for egypt this is the type of day that can be easily overlooked in these there's not huge results everywhere but you play tough teams and get good results out of them uh, new zealand had a big win over uruguay Guadeloupe beat Denmark. If we went back to the start of the day, uh, Denmark was doing fantastic and Guadeloupe uh, was down in the bottom area and they just had a big win over Denmark. That is a fantastic result for Guadeloupe and uh, I believe that might be their first win. So at the start of the day, Denmark was in second and this is Guadeloupe's first win. So fantastic result for them. Getting on the board here, uh, knocking over a top team, they would be super happy about that. Italy had a fantastic result over Singapore, and uh, the rest of the matches were relatively close, except Netherlands had a pretty solid win over USA 1. So let's take a look at uh, the other fields to see who's doing well, but I just want you to note, currently the leading score in the Open is 138. Uh, in the women's, the Venice Cup, Poland is dominating the field. They're 10 VPs clear of second and second and third are still well ahead of the, the top score in the open field. But Poland's on 155 after 10 rounds. 
Rounding out the uh, top eight is Sweden, Turkey, Italy, France, and Norway. In the uh, seniors, the DRC Trophy, uh, Poland, again, huge score, 150. Uh, USA, also fantastic score on 148. And rounding out the top eight is Denmark, England, Germany, India, France, and Argentina. And in the Wuhan Cup, the mixed teams, Italy, huge score, 152. And France in second, Belgium third, and then rounding it out, USA, Romania, Poland, Germany, and Denmark. So fantastic today, today. Hope you all enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you tomorrow.